Hey, how's it going, everyone? Welcome back. This is Gray 1951. We're back for another episode of Movies from A to Z. And today, for the letter E, I have chosen a film from a genre that I happen to love, and all my friends laugh at me for the genre known as teenage angst movies from the 50s and up into the 60s. Uh, juvenile delinquents, kids having trouble in high school, uh, relationship problems, problems with parents, getting up into the beach party films, and then kids in college getting involved in hippie stuff and smoking dope. That whole thing, all the way, all the way back to films like Rebel Without a Cause and, and Blackboard Jungle from the year 1956, and then going on um, up into the late 60s, you know, and even into the early 70s. I, I lived through all that, and uh, it's just always been fascinating to me, and I still like to watch these movies. So this movie is called The Explosive Generation from 1961, and this is from the videobeat.com, one of my favorite sites. This is about... Uh, some kids, some high school kids who get involved in, in an early version of a student protest. So here's what's going on here. William Shatner is the star of this film. Now, William Shatner had already done some theater, some television, and had made um, three other films um, in non-starring roles. And this was the first time he had a starring role. He plays a high school teacher named, let's see, what's his name? Peter Griffith. And he's, he's a young guy. He's well-liked by his students. And at the beginning of the film, he is, he is um, well, it's not right at the beginning of the film, but shortly after the, after the film starts, he's conducting a class, it's a homeroom class, and the kids are all talking about senior problems. And he's putting a lot of things on the board about things they could discuss about getting into college and what you want to be when you get out of school, authority of parents. And one of the girls of the class, a girl named Janet Summers, played by Patty McCormick, Patty McCormick, the bad seed herself, she uh, says, why don't we, okay, let's let's put sex on the list. I think the, what we're most concerned about, day-to-day -day problems, is sex. And he said, well, you've already talked about sex in your health and hygiene classes. And she said, I'm not talking about venereal disease and how babies are born. I'm talking about the day-to-day -day problems that kids have involving sex. Like how far does a girl have to go with a boy to be popular? So all the kids are, uh, especially the boys are going, hey, way to go, Janet. And they're all anxious to talk about this. And the teacher said, well, these things are best discussed with your parents. And some girl, another girl chimes out. She says, oh yeah, have you ever tried to talk about sex with my mother? Which makes everybody laugh. And uh, <laughs> so, anyway, so the teacher, since he likes his kids and he wants them to be honest and open up to him, he says, okay, we'll agree to do it. I want everybody to write whatever they want on a piece of paper. Don't sign your names. And then I'll read all the papers, and when we come back tomorrow, we will talk about what somebody has written, and we can have an open discussion. Okay, so how this all came about is that uh, Janet, played by Patty McCormick, and her boyfriend, um, Dan, played by uh, an actor named Lee Consolving, and another couple, played by Billy Gray from the... Uh, Father Knows Best TV show, and a young actress named Susie Carnell, they they were at a party that was at a, at a beach house owned by Billy Gray's father, right? But the father wasn't there. He was letting the kids have the run of the place. Well, these two couples that are going together, they decided that they wanted to stay overnight at the beach house. So the girls had to lie to their, their mothers, saying, I'm staying overnight with her. No, she's staying overnight with me. So nobody would know where they were, right? So in the morning, we see all four of these kids waking up. And the viewer is not completely sure what has happened. Uh, the place is a wreck because of the party. The kids are all kind of confused and disheveled. And Patty McCormick wakes up first and said, hey, we've got to get to school. It was a school night, right? So that's how they all end up in this classroom. She's very pensive. And, and when they start talking about senior problems, she brings this up. Okay, so they all write their papers. Of course, this gets out to the parents. The parents completely freak out and think this teacher is leading to the moral degradation of their children. They, the children are angry with their parents. The teacher gets uh, suspended by this high school principal who happens to be played by Edward C. Platt, the same guy who played the police sergeant in Rebel Without a Cause a few years before. 
And uh, so it turns into this big community, you know, problem where the parents are just worried about uh, their, their kids are being led astray by this evil teacher. And, and the parents won't listen to the kids, the kids won't listen to the parents. And so the kids decide to organize a protest. A student protest. Now remember, this is 1961. There weren't a lot of white teenagers organizing student protests outside of their high schools. So that's what they do. And uh, so that's all I'm going to tell you. I, I don't know how many of you will be interested in watching a film like this, but I, I think it's great fun. And I've watched this a thousand times and truly enjoy it. So this film, uh, 1961, directed by a guy named Buzz Kulik, who uh, had a long list of credits. And uh, let's see, he did things like... Uh, well, I don't know what he, I didn't write down his credits, so I can't tell you, but he had a long list of credits. Did a lot of television also. And as I said, William Shatner, uh, it was his fourth film. Patty McCormick, of course, had become very famous in 1954 when she was only eight years old. She, well, let's see, wait a minute. She was born in 1945, so she would have been uh, eight or nine years old when she was doing um, the, the Bad Seed on Broadway. And it was very successful. Two years later, she made the film and was nominated for Best Supporting Actress. And after that, on television, she was the first one to play Helen Keller in the, the TV play The Miracle Worker, which later on, of course, became a, a Broadway play and then a successful film with, with uh, Patty Duke. But uh, Patty McCormick, although she's been in a lot of films and a lot of television and is still working today, she actually peaked in 1956 when she did The Bad Seed. She was so good in it and so well remembered that nothing she had ever did after that even came close to that kind of performance and that kind of uh, prestige. But she's still a really interesting actress. Uh, also in the cast we have, like I said, Billy Gray, who uh, goes all the way back to being a child actor and in 1951, he was in the classic science fiction movie, um, The Day the Earth Stood Still. And then from 1964 to 1960, he was uh, a star on television and following his best, sort of the ideal uh, image of the teenage kid, you know. And then we also have um, a young actor named Lee Kinsolving, who isn't that well known. He didn't make that many films. He, he had done a film called The Dark at the Top of the Stairs right before this one, and he uh, was nominated for a Golden Globe. Very impressive performance. And after this, he worked uh, mostly in television and then retired from films at a very young age, and then he uh, uh, died at a very young age at, at age 36, which is, which is very sad. We also have a very young Bo Bridges. He's in it. He, uh, Bo Bridges is the son of... Lloyd Bridges and the brother of Jeff Bridges. He had done a few things as a child actor way back in the uh, uh, late 40s and early 50s and then worked on his father's classic show, Sea Hunt, and, and started in films uh, with this one. And let's see, we also have, also in the cast, we have uh, a guy named Philip Terry who plays one of the parents. And he, he was a character actor for a long time. His big claim to fame is the fact that he was once married to Joan Crawford and managed to survive. Now, the cinematography for this film was done by a guy named Floyd Crosby, who goes all the way back to 1931 in his career. He, he shot films like High Noon, and then later on he started working for Roger Corman, and he, he shot films like Attack of the Crab Monsters, She Gods of Shark Reef, House of Usher, Pit and the Pendulum, The Haunted Palace, and then later on he did A, a Cold Wind in August, one of my favorite films, and pajama party, um, all sorts of things. So uh, I guess that's all I want to say. Now, at the beginning on, on the um, the trailer for this film, they do this terrific disclaimer where they're trying to uh, get people excited about this movie, and it says an adult motion picture for adults and teenagers because sexual tensions in today's youth have contributed to an ever-widening rift between children and parents because this is the only motion picture that has dared to tell the truth about the exploding um, antagonism and because something should be done about it the producers recommend the following exhibition policy both teenagers and parents should see this motion picture together I have a feeling that probably didn't happen, but uh, anyway, if you want to have a good time, The Explosive Generation, okay? Starring William Shatner, later on Mr. Captain Kirk, and Patty the Bad Seed McCormick.